guys. Today we're working on water control so hopefully by the end of this you'll have a bit more of an idea of how to use water in watercolour. So like normal, I am starting the page by just prepping it with an emblem and a um, title of what we're going to do today. So the first thing we are going to do, and I'm using the Escoda Reserva number six, which is linked under the video. But the first thing we're going to do today is um, see the difference between wet on dry technique or the wet on wet technique. So first thing we're doing is we're taking the wet watercolor but we're putting it on dry paper and then we're going to try and create a flat wash from uh, this technique and this is one that we use very often in watercolor you can see there that um, when you're trying to create a flat wash you might get a little bead of color or water just down in one corner and you can easily get that off with uh, either a paper towel or your brush just um, a a clean just dry off your brush and you can pull that up uh, so now I've just put water on the paper and we're, we're dropping wet watercolor onto wet paper so I am using Holbein shell pink here or Hel Holbein brilliant pink and now Holbein shell pink and you can see that these two techniques make up a lot of what we uh, do in watercolor so right now I am going back to the wet on dry technique and I am brushing some petals just to create a flower uh, and then I'm going to take some um, lemon yellow and I'm going to put that in as a wet on wet technique to create the center of the flower so we use these interchangeably constantly you know while painting I have used the wet on wet technique for the center of the flower and I've put the lemon yellow down and then I've put the French ochre, Daniel Smith French ochre on top of that. And so it creates this beautiful gradation, you know, from the middle of the flower sort of radiating out. And now I'm taking some opera rose and I'm putting that on the petals to create some interest and variation in the petals. And even though this is just a small flower, um, these are the types of things that you can create. So if you're just a beginner, these are some really good ways to just fill a page with florals like this. So now I'm using just water. We're doing the wet on wet technique. And, and I like to do this often with like a white flower or if I'm trying to get different um, colors to sort of flow and disperse and blend. So I'm using the opera rose there in the center. And you can see here that if I don't really like where it's moving through the water I can easily uh, manage that at this stage so uh, now I'm using some Sedona to, to again do the wet on wet for the middle so at this point everything we do in this flower will be wet on wet until we finish this layer and let it dry and then we can glaze some more on top so we could again start with dry on wet uh, wet on dry and um, you know go over it like that again or we could do another wet on wet on top of this so this is, is a really great um, exercise just to fill a sketchbook let them dry overlap them and I also have a whole tutorial on transparent layered flowers so I'll try and link that below as well so you can see the difference in the two flowers there the top one has a hard edge and the bottom one is softening into, you know, the petals and the colors are softening into each other. So right now we're going to paint one of these pansies. So these are just from a punnet of edible flowers from the supermarket. So if you, um, you know, have access to that, you can get something like this and you can use that as your, um, you know, example. And you can put that in your sketchbook or you can just pause the video and use these ones that I have here okay so we're going to use some of these techniques and create this floral so the first thing we're going to do is fill one pet <laughs> fill one petal with water and um, 
you may have heard people talking about water control on you know different papers and working time on different papers so depending on which type of paper you're using you'll sort of experiment and you can see here that if you have if you think you have too much you can easily dry your brush off and just wipe up the excess water uh, but if you have a paper like this paper here does dry fairly quickly so I like to make sure it's wet enough so that I have a good working time so what that means is that if I want to lift anything, if I want to add anything, I have enough time to do all those things before the paint starts, um, yeah, the paint starts drying. Because once the paint starts to dry, you don't want to add anything. You don't want to try and lift anything. You want to just let that dry and then continue working on it. So, you know, um, you'll kind of, you've got to experiment with your paper and when I was first starting I always used to kind of touch the paper with my uh, finger while I was working just to see is it starting to dry um, or you can kind of sort of look at it and see if it's not glistening anymore uh, you know you need to leave it alone uh, because working continuing to work on it once it started to dry that's what's going to cause blooms and uh, things that are not very uh, uh, nice to look at so I usually like to um, create blooms by adding water back backwashing water back in and it makes a, a more natural sort of a bloom uh, but anyway that's probably a subject for a whole nother video so here you can see that I'm sort of trying to make the petals white here so I've I've um, and you can see here that I'm continuing to monitor this and I'll just keep lifting it out if I don't like where it's heading and where it's dispersing but I've uh, mixed up some Daniel Smith Raw Umber Violet and the Holbein Shell Pink and I am using that to sort of accentuate the outer part of the petal. Now this is where the dispersion rate of your paints comes in. So for example, I used to have Nicolazo Yellow in this palette and I really love the color, but it's such a strong color that every time I would, you know, put it in I know it would just take over all the other colors and I just I didn't want that to happen so I now use lemon yellow as my cool yellow and French ochre as my warm yellow and then I can use those two together to create a similar tone but I can effectively manage that and make sure that it's just going where I want it to go. I hope this is all making sense it's it's quite a large subject to sort of cover and I think that part of it comes from experience and just from you painting, trying out different papers. Um, for example, you know, if you've been working on cellulose papers and then you switch to cotton papers, you'll probably have to add more pigment because the paint will uh, dry. Um, it's, it's not going to be as saturated of a color. Um, so, but that can also happen between different cotton papers as well. So you're, you're constantly sort of adapting to which papers you're using, which pigments you're using. And then there's the, also this concept of water through water and paint through water. And I've always found it fascinating, um, especially like from Australia, we have the beaches and we're constantly being told as kids to be careful of the rips. And so they're only on a certain part of the beach. So, you know, currents move through currents and water can move through water, which is really a fascinating thing in and of itself. And then with watercolor, we have a similar thing here. Like you can see that I have put water over the entire petal, but the opera rose has stayed pretty much where I've put it. So that's an interesting thing to look at different pigments. Some will disperse incredibly and will take over that whole space. Like I said, Nicolazo Yellow would probably do that. And some will allow you more control and allow you kind of to place them where you want them to go. Okay, so let's get back to what I'm doing here. So we have, I've kind of waited till the petals dry enough that I know I can start um, wetting the petal next to it and it's not going to bleed into the next one. So that's the first thing. Uh, I, I give it a little bit of drying time. I know that I am pretty good to go here and I can um, continue to add the color. And again, you can see I'm doing the same thing. Sorry, I apologize. There's, 
the house is really noisy it's um yeah um so uh yeah i'm just putting um, the color back in the middle of the flower here and letting it bleed out and again I will continue to monitor that if I want to lift some out if I want to add other colors now's the time to do that Okay, so you can see here that I am leaving the two petals that we've just done here. I'm not going to add any of these extra colors into them. So on the petal on the right, I wanted to deepen that up a little bit. And I want these ones just to be very, very vibrant. So they're sort of secondary petals, but I still want them to stand out. And then we're just going to continue the process as before. And we will use the raw umber and shell pink. Uh, around the edges for now. So I also have a tutorial, another tutorial of like a lilac viola. So I will link that one below as well. And you can find that just through um, if you look through my video. So it's a little bit more detailed and uh, probably a bit more advanced than this one as well. So you can see here that I'm adding the French ochre in also in between the opera rose and the mix that we're using for the outer petal. And so the other thing to sort of think about with doing these is, uh, you know, the difference between, I guess, loose florals versus a little bit more uh, botanical illustration. And you don't have to take this to a full realistic, uh, you know, petal or, you know, flower and you've done like 60 hours on it. But in order to get um, a more realistic sort of loose flower, uh, you want to sort of learn and understand a little bit about the shape, the, f the colors, um, the parts of the flower, how it works, how it grows, how it moves. And, and when you learn uh, a little bit more about it, then when you are creating, you know, your, um, what's the word? So when you're simplifying the floral, um, you know what you want to simplify and what are the focal points that you can still keep and, you know, where you want color shifts um, and all those kinds of things. So it is important to sort of look at a realistic flower and understand a few of those things. How many petals, where do the shapes fall, where do the shadows fall? Um, you know are any petals like this one you can see here this one we're now doing this as more of a white petal on the side here so it's not going to have as much um, of the upper rows and then the two that you can see that I did off video behind there the top one and the bottom one I just painted um, upper rows on there and so I could do a, a looser version of this now and um, be really comfortable with you know the different aspects of what I want to um, bring to the floral and again this is probably for another video but I think that it, it sort of does work in so you can see here that now this is all dry we are doing uh, wet on dry over the top of it so we've let it all dry I am coming back I'm not wetting all the petals again I'm just going to, with my a wet paintbrush onto the dry flower and we are glazing and adding more layers uh, but what I was saying was you become more intuitive with your shapes and with your color choices and 
you know are able to make those uh, sort of simplify things but still have the definition that you want uh, if you've done that legwork to become more familiar with the subject so for example I was watching I think it was a Hallmark movie years ago and um, he asked her uh, if you were cooking it was like a cooking one and he said you know just intuitively sort of tell me what you would put in the meal and she was going around sort of picking out all these herbs and everything okay so I'm a bit sidetracked here we're just going to put water around the flower here and I'm just kind of going to show you how to do a background and blend it out softly um, and we did do some of this in the last video as well but where was I so um, he asked her what herbs and she was picking all these herbs and and at the time like I really didn't know a lot about herbs I used to love watching Jamie Oliver pick the fresh herbs from the market when he first came out and I was just always thinking how do you know you know which herbs and really for it to become intuitive you have to learn about it and then you at, once you've learned about it you know for me now it's very easy like I, I like basil sage um, chives you know things like that and and uh, because I, I I did sit down and sort of learn about what uh, properties the herbs have what are they good for so and then once you do that legwork it becomes really easy to um, understand and just to grab things spontaneously and you know like when you're cooking and I think it's the same with watercolor if you do some some work uh, you know learning about your colors learning about the paper that you like and how it how the water flows on it uh, which pigments flow in different ways um, it will really improve you know the types of paintings that you want to do so you can see here that I am just taking the um, paper towel and I am sort of drying the edges of the uh, water there I think I pulled it you know a bit of water out a bit too much but I just wanted to let the um, you know paint sort of softly blend into the water background and even just doing backgrounds like this so you can experiment I mean if you don't want to do a full you know flower you could just do a circle and try some different backgrounds so you know do a full page and, and soak the page and put different colors in the background or try and get a smooth wash on a larger you know around a circle just or a square or a diamond or something easy and just work on the backgrounds okay so that is it for this portion of the video so I hope uh, this was helpful I'm not exactly sure I think this could probably be a whole course like there's quite a lot to um, work on and think about with regards to water control but hopefully this will get you started and um, again watch the other videos and then there's one other thing that I so after we had done this video I was gonna leave it here but uh, I was doing something else and one night I just sat down and I wanted to um, show you something else so I did a little circle and then well we'll see it in a minute but 
I just want you to know that there are lots of different ways to try these things so you don't have to paint it the way I painted it you don't have to use the colors that I used um, I will link the other video so you can see one done in a bit more detail and I think I go through the sketching process and everything in that video so if you want to um, sketch along with me as well I'll link that video but so I think it's coming up now so the this is the circle that we did and I you can see there on the right that I actually uh, left an outline so I didn't sketch it and I just did it with my brush and I wet the rest of the circle and I left this sort of flower coming off the side of the circle here and then I've taken my brush and I'm actually uh, using the wet on wet on the wet part of the circle and we are just creating sort of a very loose floral here like a rose I just want you to see that there are so many ways you can practice these things and you know so we I, I don't go very far into this we might finish this in another video but I just didn't have time to finish it but I wanted to show you the beginning of it and you know how you can do all kinds of different things with this and with the flower that we left there on the right the space that we left dry we can go back in and fill that in just with line work we might go back in and fill that with another flower that overlaps the other one at some stage um, but there's just a lot of possibility here just by using and interchanging these two techniques of wet on dry and wet on wet So the other thing is we do have some good videos coming up next week and I do want to try and get out the March favorite mixes. I've got some really pretty mixes for you but I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it out maybe by next weekend. We'll see how I go. It's going to be a busy one for me but um, this might be a really nice video so I'll link this one as well. Uh, this was done in the December uh, advent calendar but this uh, isn't again another painting one. So some of the techniques that we've learned today are in that video and also the one about not overworking your painting. So if you haven't seen those two, I will link those below as well. And I will see you guys next week with uh, some more exciting things. Bye.